Hey guys, welcome back to Finn Scales and Fluffy Tales. I know, it's been way too long. I mean, I guess I did post a video like a month or two ago, but the video was recorded way back in March and you guys have not had any kind of update on anything I've been doing um, and my pets for a really, really long time. And I wanna say that there have been a few changes that have been uh, kind of big actually. Um, one of the biggest ones is that I've had a few uh, deaths in my pet family in the past few months. Um, Cake, my Pac-Man frog, who was coming up on a year here in like this month actually, he passed away back in June. Um, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you won't know about any of the, any of my pets that passed away the past few months. Um, but Cake, Cake was a hard hit for me. He passed away seemingly very suddenly. I mean, he was eating all up until the day that he died. Um, I really don't know what happened with him. His humidity was fine. He was eating good. He had a water dish to soak in his tank. Um, I actually had an automatic misting system for him that I set on a timer to make sure that he was getting enough humidity. And he made the trip to Illinois pretty well. He was moved to Illinois all the way back in February and he died in June and he and that was before we moved to our new house. Um, since moving to Illinois, um, all the fish in my 10 gallon have passed away, including the African dwarf frog I had. Um, it was very uh, tough for me to take that too because I've always considered myself an aquarist. I mean, when I got cake, you know, I was trying something new. I'd never had an amphibian like that or a pet that was quite like him. And I have considered myself a decent aquarist for a while and all the fish in my 10 gallon died. Um, the, my betta fish died back in August, two days after I got back from a vacation. And um, I realize now that the water here is way too hard for my fish. So I have worked to try to do something to lower the general hardness of the water because obviously whatever was going on, the fish couldn't handle it. And when I tested the water, everything was fine. All the parameters were fine except the general hardness. And I didn't realize that soon enough with the fish. So I'm guessing that's what happened to them. Um, also, Fluffy has died. Um, I noticed Fluffy had died um, right before we went on our vacation in August, so he died the beginning of last month. And that was pretty hard for me too. Um, Fluffy was doing pretty well, he was eating, still not sure exactly why he passed away. And that was the hardest part about the death of Cake and Fluffy is that I still don't know what happened to them. And I don't know if I, I, I will never know, but I do know that, you know, when I got them, I was trying something new. I'd never owned a tarantula before or a Pac-Man frog. And I did do a lot of research before I got them, but I have decided that I will not be getting another tarantula or a Pac-Man frog. I just don't feel right replacing them. Um, and I just don't think they were the right pet for me. Uh, there have been a lot of big changes in my life recently. Of course, the environment that you see, the room I'm in, is completely new. And that is because back in July, uh, my fiance and I moved into our new house. So we are homeowners now, no more apartment, which is awesome, which means I can have as many fish or as many pets as I want, and I don't have to worry about asking any kind of apartment complex or anything like that if I'm allowed to have them. So aside from updating you guys on everything that's been going on in my life, I'm gonna give you a kind of a mini 
house tour of some rooms of our house, mostly the downstairs area because that's where my pets are. Um, so the big changes that happened in my life was in May, I graduated from college, so I'm completely out of school now. I officially moved to Illinois that same weekend that I graduated, which we didn't really have a ceremony because of COVID. So it wasn't a huge deal anyway, like the actual graduating part. And then I moved all of my stuff out that same weekend, which was insane. And then I officially moved in with Alex, I guess in June, because my apartment in Ohio was then completely empty. And then last month, Alex and I moved into our new house. I guess it was July now, so two months ago. And I got a new job in June. Um, haven't found any work in music yet. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I don't have that many subscribers anyway, but I got a degree in music. So that's, you know, what I know about. But uh, in back in June, I got a job working at a dog daycare facility, which I'm not gonna say the name on here because God forbid if they ever found this video, I don't wanna like, I don't, I'm not a person that advertises where I work because I don't want anything I say to get me fired or to reflect poorly on the company. Not that I would try to, but you know, I'm just trying to be safe. So I'm not gonna tell you guys uh, the company I work for, but it's a dog daycare facility. And I've been really enjoying working with the dogs, although I do most of the time just feel like a chew toy. But you know, that's that comes with the job. Uh, and let's see. So I talked about moving twice. I graduated, I got a new job. And that's pretty much the biggest life changes that I've had the past two months, um, as well as some of my pets passing away. But I guess now I will get into showing you the house, or at least this room that I'm in. This is kind of like the pseudo pet room because that's mostly what's in here so let me just turn the camera around okay so i had to back way up to be able to show you guys the entire room before we walk in but alex and i call this room our sunroom and it doesn't really have a door to go into it but it's definitely separated by like this kind of wall and we call it the sunroom because it leads out to our patio and our backyard our backyard is pretty small, it's not very big, and you can kind of see through these things. This is our backyard, there's the hose out there, our little patio. We don't have any patio furniture yet, we do have lawn chairs, but I eventually want to get a patio set. And this thing right here covering the window, I hate it. I really hate it because it's really hard to move and use, so eventually we will be replacing it with a curtain. This wall, I love this wall. Um, the, the ceilings in this room are really, really high. And so we hung most of the paintings really high. This piece of art right here, I love. Now, um, I live in the Chicago area now and it's super flat out here. And I grew up in Pennsylvania where it's really mountainous. So when we were in Hobby Lobby looking for stuff and I saw this, I knew I had to have it. And I saw this one too because it reminds me of my favorite place in the world, which is Raystown Lake. Um, Cause that looks like, you know, it's just a painting of trees and water. It looks like a mountain in the background. Had to have this painting too. Now this wall isn't quite done. Um, up here is the antlers to the buck I shot a while back. And uh, my dad put it on a board for me and I decided to hang it here in the house. And this picture, trying to get the light out of it, this picture is a photo that I took of Raystown Lake. Oh, probably, hmm, maybe like seven or eight years ago now that I had framed. And another picture of Racetown will be going here on this side of the antlers as soon as we hang it. We don't have all of our, our, our art hung yet in our house, but we do have, um, we have most of it. And I have the picture already like ready to go. We just haven't gotten a chance to hang it yet. 
Um, this is Gimli's tank. I don't know if I ever actually showed you guys Gimli's tank. There's a lot of glare on it right now. Let me see if I can fix that. So to try to get rid of the glare, I have closed the curtain on our double windows. But this is Gimli's terrarium. This is where I got it from. Uh, I actually got this from at the. I actually got this at the same reptile show that I bought cake from last year. So since then, Gimli has been living in this, and this substrate is just dry eco earth, which is a digestible substrate. So if you have a leopard gecko, you can use this as substrate. He's got his water bowl, his calcium bowl. He's got a few poops in the corner that need cleaned, but. This is what his tank looks like. Um, that log, that half log there is his warm hide and his cool slash humid hide when he's shedding is this is underneath that rock. And he actually really does love this piece of wood. Sorry, the glare is like really bad. I'm not so good at like filming tanks. This is a much better view with less glare. And that plant I got from Petco because I thought it tied it all together and made it look really nice. And here's the crickets down here that I keep for his food. And here we go. This is Pascal. Everybody wants to see him. There we go. And actually, I'm pretty sure Pascal's a female. Um, she would be old enough to be able to tell whether or not she's female. And she looks female to me. But, you know, I've been calling him a he for so long. It's kind of like, why change now? But Pascal is now in a 20 gallon long aquarium. So once we moved into the new house, we didn't have to worry about gallonage. Um, I put him in a 20 and I added some plants that used to be in the 10 gallon because once the fish died, I tore it apart. And I'm gonna show that tank to you in a second. But I added some more plants to make it look a little more full. We still got the same sand in there, um, her little log hide, and there she is. Pascal's been doing really, really well. Um, can't, not really anything else to report. She has been completely doing her thing. And, you know, I don't really know if she noticed that the tank was bigger because it's only five gallons bigger than what I had her in before. I originally had Pascal in a 15 gallon aquarium that I put her in when she outgrew her 10 gallon baby tank that I had her in. And I said to myself that I was going to upgrade her to a 20 when she grew bigger. And she didn't grow any bigger. She stopped growing at four and a half to five inches long. And that is very abnormal for an axolotl, as most of you guys know, if you're interested in this species of amphibian, you will know that axolotls can reach 7 to 13 inches in length total. So having an axolotl stay at 4.5, 5 inches long is really, really rare. And that's why I always remind people that, hey, a 20 gallon is probably what you're going to need because not all axolotls are going to be like Pascal. Pascal was special, I guess. Not really special, but poor girl wasn't probably bred super well. I didn't get Pascal from a breeder. I got her from a local pet shop when I was living in Toledo. And I fell in love with her. And I don't know if it was actually her or just another um, leucistic axolotl, but they saved me one and I picked her up when I had the tank ready for her. And this thing back there, that little bag with the yellow stuff in it, that is very important. And when we get to the 10 gallon, I'm going to explain that to you guys. But this is Pascal's setup, pretty much just like what it was like um, back in my apartment in Ohio. And nothing really changed, except I gave her five more gallons of water to live in. And she likes it pretty good. Not, again, not sure if she noticed that the tank got bigger, but she, you know, she seems to enjoy herself in here. Still gets fed earthworms for food. Um, and that's pretty much it for Pascal. She's been doing really well, and there's not much else to say about her. 
So one thing I almost forgot to talk about with Pascal's tank is the fact that there's no fan up here anymore. So in his previous sub setup, I had a fan on top of the tank to keep the water cold. And um, when we moved, he didn't have the fan right away at Alex's place because we forgot to pack it. When Alex took some of my pets, um, I forgot to pack the fan and we forgot to load it into the car. So Pascal didn't have his fan. But we usually keep our house pretty cool. And our house is usually under, like, the thermostat says 73, but it's usually cooler than that. So if we take a look at the temperature, so there's the temperature. His temperature is actually around 66 degrees. So that is pretty cold. And for axolotls, as long as their temperature stays below 70, they are usually really good with temperature. Oh, and there's Daisy. She still comes in here without the rug, but she decided to bless us with her presence. <laughs> um, so this is Pascal. He, he or she, he, she, um, he walks like that a lot. Um, I think it's because uh, I'm not sure why. He doesn't get fed bloodworms anymore. When he was a baby, he got fed bloodworms as his main diet, mainly because I didn't have anything that was small enough for him. But now he only gets an, one earthworm every other day. And he still walks like that sometimes. Um, and that's like his normal body shape as well. He's not like bloated or anything. That's pretty normal. But as I said before, he doesn't have a normal shape, as uh, most other axolotls do. But anyway, and that was Daisy protesting me moving closer to the tank. Um, the reason I don't have a fan on here is because his tank doesn't need it. His tank naturally stays below 70 the way it is in our house, so I don't need to put a fan on his tank to evaporate the water super fast, so I don't. However, if I did notice, like maybe this winter when it starts getting warm and we have to do a lot more to heat the house and his water starts getting closer to 70, I will probably set the fan back up so that it keeps his tank cold. But if that doesn't happen and he doesn't need it, I'm not going to run the fan to evaporate all the water out. So, so far his tank has been staying in a pretty good range under 70 degrees. So, that is the last update I have for Pascal. And uh, I just gave you guys one more shot of her cute little face. Anytime I talk about her, I have to remind myself to say her. And I know I just said him this whole time in the last clip. But it doesn't really matter. Pascal doesn't care. He, can, he she can be whatever he, she wants to be. But I know you guys like to see him because of how cool she is. Okay, one last look at the tank. Okay, so now I have turned around and you are looking at the living room of our house. I'll talk about some stuff first. So we did not own this chair before or the ottoman. We bought it from somebody on Facebook Marketplace. The couch is the same one that we had in Alex's apartment in here in Illinois. Yes, this was his couch from his Illinois apartment. The couch I had in my Ohio apartment we threw out because of how old it was. This clock was a gift from Alex's parents. I have no idea where they got it. Uh, let's see. That's Alex's hat, but this table is just a regular black coffee table. We're gonna replace it eventually. It matches the uh, two side tables we have, and of course our entertainment system. So we have black, we have like black furniture in our living room, mainly because that's what Alex had in his old apartment, and eventually we will be trading it in for some lighter wood. This is our entertainment system. We have an Xbox and a Switch because, of course, you know, who doesn't? 
We love playing, well, Alex loves playing Smash Bros. We also have, uh, now this is pre-owned. I got this. This is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Alex really likes playing that. Of course, we love watching Lord of the Rings on our, um, on the Xbox with because it has a DVD player too. And I really love playing Animal Crossing on here. And this is our TV. It barely fit on this wall, but Alex expertly mounted it. You can kind of see a little bit of the kitchen to the left and that giant mirror that leads to the doorway on the right, which was a gift from Alex's parents. Um, this is our dining room table. We bought it from somebody on, uh, what was it? Yes. So the same person we got our chair and ottoman from, we also bought this table from them. This dining set is a solid oak dining set. Yes, solid oak. Trust me, it is very heavy. It came with four leaves and they priced it to sell because they were moving and they didn't want to take it with them. And I totally understand that because of how heavy it was. It took all three of us to carry it out of their house and load it onto the truck. So it was very, very heavy. The two rugs we have in here that are kind of complementing, they're both from a store called Menards. If you're not from the Midwest, you won't know what that is, but it's basically like a Lowe's or Home Depot, except they also sell groceries. Um, up above the table, we have pictures of our friends and family, and of course, Daisy. I'm not gonna show you guys all their faces because, you know, privacy and all that stuff, but we're gonna be adding more pictures to that. This decorative painting we got from Hobby Lobby, as well as this one on the other side of the wall. And this corner right here is Daisy's corner. And of course, she already spilled something in her water. But anyway, this is Daisy's cage. Um, in Alex's apartment in Illinois, she had a giant 12 by 5 exercise pen that we kept set up for her all the time. Here in our new house, she has her cage. And of course, since I'm home, the door is open so that she can roam around and do whatever she wants. Let's see. Here in Illinois, it is 2.30 today, so if you're on the East Coast, then it'll be 3.30 for you. But normally by this time, she is taking a nap. However, she has taken the time to enjoy her Sherwood pellets. And it looks like she has dropped one into her water and it has like fell, fallen apart, which I just changed her water, so she must have just done that. Um, let's see. Her hay is, of course, full. That is the same hay bag she's always had. I did buy her new mats, though. She has a bright orange mat and a bright watermelon mat under her food and water. And I bought her new mats because the other ones she had were deteriorating after she was chewing them. And uh, she just kind of destroyed them. The hair got all stuck to them, so I bought her two new ones. Back there is her hide that I got from Petco when she was a little baby. Um, I really do need to replace it. It's getting kind of gross because she likes to pee and poop on it. I do rinse it with hot water every once in a while, but it's untreated wood. So anything that you do is going to stain it. This is her Jumbo Wear Scatterless Litter Box with the grate. It probably needs cleaned out right now, but I will be doing that here soon. Um, on top of her cage, we have her brand new litter boxes that I just bought her because her she had two before, but they started to leak, or at least one of them started to leak, so I threw that one away and ordered two new ones because the one in her cage is actually cracked a little bit on the front too. So I'll be throwing that one away and be putting these two into use. And I just keep the things that I need most up here for her, which is her food, her Sherwood uh, digestion supplements, paper towels for cleaning. This um, helps me get the stuff out of her cage when she spills her hay everywhere. I have a puzzle toy here for her and of course her treats. We keep her hay box right here next to her cage. All of her other stuff is currently still upstairs. I'm not going to take you guys upstairs because we still have some stuff to unpack up there and it's not super clean, but we have her hay box right next to her cage because I use that all the time. Her carrier is back here too. That could probably go upstairs, but 
If we don't want her to go behind the couch, we do use it to block the way so she can't get there. And this little baby right here is our air freshener. Well, no, it's not a freshener. It's a filter. This is her, this is an air filter. This is what it's called. And Alex bought this on Amazon. I'm not sure how much he paid for it, but it wasn't super expensive. It's not oscillating or anything, but we put this next to her cage to try to minimize any smells that come out of here. Now, normally Daisy doesn't smell, although, you know, when you live with animals, most of you will know that eventually you do become nose blind to like pretty much any of their smells unless it gets really bad. And when we have people over, we don't want them coming into our house and smelling rabbit. And Daisy doesn't usually smell, but occasionally her litter box does get kind of stinky. And of course, grass has its own smell, and we don't really want people smelling that. So we bought an air filter to help with that, and so far it's been really working. So that is Daisy's little corner, and she'll probably come out here eventually, but in the afternoon she just likes to laze around her cage and kind of do whatever she wants but i did just clean out her cage and like kind of sweep it out so that's what she's doing in there just kind of checking everything out she never leaves anything the way i put it if i put something somewhere she'll usually always move it so she just kind of likes everything to be where she puts it so yep that is daisy's cage and last but not least we have the 10 gallon so this is what the 10 gallon looks like now. It is of course completely different than what it looked like the last time you guys saw it. So after my fish died, I realized that I just wanted to start all over. I cleaned out everything, took out the substrate. I did clean the plants really well and I gave the plants that I wasn't using to Pascal, which is why he has them. And I decided to do something I've never done with an aquarium before to this aquarium, which is I decided to make it a planted tank, which I will soon be adding shrimp to. I say soon, but it's not going to be that soon. Um, as you can see, it is not done. Right now, it literally has the bare minimum stuff in it, and I'm going to explain to you guys what happened. So when Aragorn, which that's what I decided to name my last beta, when he passed away, I bought some more test strips to make sure I had good ones. So these are the ones that I bought and I tested the water. And when I looked at the strip, I realized that all the parameters were fine, except for the general hardness. So if you look on this bottle, it's kind of hard to see in this light, might not focus okay if you look in this bottle the top the very top one which is kind of hard to see is the general hardness on the end there's a brighter pink one that says 1000 and then all the other colors except for the zero all the other colors in green are is good general hardness where my tank was was the red the 1000 one that is where my general hardness was when my fish died. So I realized that that was the problem. Now, when I lived in Ohio, um, I didn't have a problem with hard water, but here that is a lot different. Our house and this area has super hard water. So after I realized the water was really hard, I needed to figure out something to fix it. So this is what I came up with. This is the API water softener pillow. And I will tell you guys, it works. Um, I bought this from a local fish store and I put it in the tank. Within two days, the five gallons of water that is in this tank was in the safe zone on the test strips. So I do have to add more water in here. I guess the only reason I didn't is because you know, there's no fish in here right now and I don't really have that many plants. So I just didn't fill it up all the way yet. But that is what is gonna be happening in the 10 gallon as eventually I'm gonna fill it up all the way. But right now I don't need to. And I'm gonna to explain to you what I did. 
but I got this water softener pillow and I put it in the 10 gallon. And then after I realized it worked, I bought another one from Amazon and I put it in Pascal's tank. So they do need recharge. It only lasts about 48 hours, but they work really well. So probably today I'm gonna to be taking them out of the tanks, mixing the aquarium salt in the seven ounces of tap water that it said and soaking them for two hours, which is how you recharge them. So if you have really hard water and you only have a couple tanks, this is a really good thing to use to actually soften the water. If you have a lot of tanks and your water is too hard, I would just suggest getting a reverse osmosis water filter for them or buying water from the pet store. But I didn't want to do that. And Alex and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a reverse osmosis water filter. So we're not going to be doing that here at this house. But that is how I fixed that problem. Now, I'm gonna start at the top here. This light is what I bought for the tank. It is a full spectrum LED light made for plants. It wasn't very expensive, it was only $25. And I will be linking it in the description in case you guys wanna get it. This is the 18 to 24 inch size. I forget what it's called. There's a lot of lights online that you can get. Um, let's see. I also changed the filtration of this tank to be a sponge filter because I knew I wanted to put shrimp in here. That little filter, that little sponge back there is just the sponge I'm keeping in here to grow bacteria on in case I ever need to use a hospital tank. So this plant, the only actually growing plant in here is Anubius. And this plant was left over from the 10 gallon. I've had this plant for many years and I decided to plant it in here. These moss balls I've also had for a really long time. They're not looking super good. They have some brown spots in them, but I'm hoping they'll bounce back with this light and everything. Um, the piece of driftwood I got from Flip Aquatics. It is a Malaysian driftwood. That's what it's called. It was super heavy, and I put it in the tank and it sank immediately, so that was awesome. It cost $15. And the substrate in here, which I just ordered more because I don't think this is enough for actually planting like deep rooted plants or anything, but this is the Fluval Stratum substrate, which I will also be linking in the description. I bought four pounds of it on Amazon and then I realized that wasn't gonna be enough. So I bought some more, but they were out of it. So I had to wait longer for it to be in stock, but they said it should be here next Wednesday. Oh, and here's Daisy. I knew she would come out of her cage at some point. She just kind of likes to run around and explore. This room over here, we'll be getting a rug at some point so Daisy can have an easier time, but she still goes in there anyway. So this 10 gallon is what we got right now. My plan for this tank is to, once I get more substrate, I'm gonna be adding the plants that I want. And then I'm gonna be continuing to check the water parameters to make sure that they are stable, uh, mainly because I'm basically starting all over with this tank as far as cycling it, because I cleaned everything out and got new substrate. I used a solution of white vinegar and water to get most, not all, but most of the calcium deposits off the top of the tank. So this tank, I'm hoping to be a nice planted shrimp tank. And I will be ordering uh, the plants from Flip Aquatics as well. Not sure if I'm gonna get the shrimp online or if I'm gonna um, have a pet store order them for me, but I'll figure that out as the time comes. And then I'm hoping to try putting a beta fish in here with the shrimp. As far as the research I have done, it says that it can be risky, but it can be done. Now I'm going to be getting the beta lots of food to eat to make sure that he stays very well fed and doesn't feel like snacking on the shrimp. But I will not be adding the beta for a while because I want to get the plants all established in here. And then that'll probably take a few weeks to get them established and the, when they look the way I want them to look and the water conditions are good, then I will buy the shrimp but I won't be buying the beta right after I buy the shrimp or at the same time. So the shrimp will probably be living in here for a few weeks to a month or two before I even consider putting a beta fish in here. 
And of course, I will be adding the heater back into this tank um, at some point. But right now, it doesn't need a heater because of the fact that there's no fish in here. So if there were fish, I would have a heater in this tank, but there's no fish. And betas like the water to be warmer. And there's some shrimp that like warm water too, so I'll be doing that at some point. But this is my 10 gallon. This is what happened to it. And I'm hoping to make it look a whole lot better than it does right now. And I decided that this is gonna be a long-term project and I'm gonna take it really slow when starting over. So I will try to keep you guys updated on my progress with this tank. So the next time you see it, it'll probably have all the substrate and all the plants and everything. And I'll try to update you guys as I do more and more steps with it. And that's the tour of my house, I guess, or at least some of my house. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate you watching my videos and supporting me, all 14 of you. So I guess that's pretty good. Um, I don't post a lot on here, but sometimes I feel the need that to like update you guys and I just wanna share you know, what's going on in my life. So I hope you guys um, enjoy that. If you have any tips for starting a planted tank for someone who's never done it, or any tips for keeping shrimp, um, let me know. I'm still doing some research. Um, Flip Aquatics has been like a complete eye-opener for me. I love all the shrimp on their website. All their stuff is really awesome. I'll definitely be getting a drip acclimation system from them before I get my shrimp home. So that's going to be pretty exciting. I've never kept shrimp before, never had a planted tank, so it's going to be an adventure. Um, but I really did want to do something really different. And now that I have a little more money, a little more time, I decided that I was going to take the plunge and do a planted tank. So let me, got, let, let me know what you guys think of all of that. And I will catch you on the next video.